What's up everyone, my name is Taylor Nemechek and this is Who's That Saint? Today's a special episode because we're not just talking about one, but two saints. And these two saints lived in the time of the early persecutions of the church in Africa by the Emperor Severus. And for all you Harry Potter fans out there, sadly this is a different Severus than all of our fan favorite Severus Snape. But who might I be talking about? The Saints Perpetua and Felicity. So the question is, who are Saints Perpetua and Felicity? Now what's unusual about the stories of Perpetua and Felicity is that most of the stories of the martyrs from the early church are known to us only by legend, but we actually know the story of Perpetua and Felicity from the very hand of Perpetua herself. The re her recount of their lives is known as the Passion of St. Perpetua, St. Felicity, and their companions. And this recount of their lives was actually so popular in the first centuries that it was even often read during the liturgies. Perpetua's date of birth is sometime in the later 2nd century, but their story begins in the year of 203 when Perpetua was just a little over 20 years old. It was then that the young Perpetua, a well-educated woman, decided to follow in her mother's footsteps and become a Christian. And in her example, her brother also wanted to become a Christian, so he became a catechumen as well. Now, this decision to become a Christian most likely meant death during this time period or sometime in the near future due to the persecutions of Emperor Severus, and her pagan father tried everything to talk her out of this decision. She had so many reasons to live, being a well-educated woman, and she also had a baby son that she was still nursing at this time. And a little side note, it's known that Perpetua was married, but since her husband is never mentioned, historians assume that he just died while he was still really pretty young. And so, with her pl father pleading for her not to become a Christian, she takes this response where she points out a water jug and asks, see that pot lying there? Can you call it by any other name than what it is? And her father in response to this says, of course not. And so Perpetua then replies, neither can I call myself by any other name than what I am, a Christian. And this response upset her father so much that he actually attacked her. And so she fled and was able to be separated from her father for a few days, but the separation actually is what caused her arrest and imprisonment a little a few days later. And so Perpetua was arrested with four other catechumens, one of which is Felicity, who we're going to hear a lot about here in a short while. Um, and their instructor uh, of the catechumens, the instructor of their faith, um, his name was Saturus, he also chose to share in the, their imprisonment, and so he was also arrested with them. Perpetua had been baptized before she was imprisoned, and she was known for the gift of the Lord's speech and receiving messages from God. And at the time of her baptism, she tells us that she was told to pray for nothing but endurance in the face of her trials. The prison these young Christians were kept in was so crowded that the heat was suffocating, and the soldiers guarding the prisoners constantly would push and shove them without any concern for their well-being. So the conditions were horrible, and many of these Christians died while in prison. But among all this, Perpetua's most ex excruciating pain was being separated from her baby. And even with all this, Felicity was even worse off. She was enduring all this, all the suffocating heat, the crowding, the pushing, the shoving, all of this while she was eight months pregnant. And there were two deacons in the prison with them. And so these deacons, seeing what these young women were having to endure, paid the guards to move Perpetua and Felicity to a better part of the prison. And in this better part of the prison, Perpetua was able to have her mother and brother visit. And her mother would bring her baby boy with her so that she was able to be with her baby for a time. And Perpetua recounts that in this better part of the prison, when she was able to see her baby, the prison was no longer a prison, but it became a palace because she was once again united with her baby son. After a while, Perpetua and the others were brought in front of the judge to be sentenced. And while in front of the judge, he tried to change their minds, but when they stood fast, they were sentenced to be thrown to the wild beasts in the arena. And Perpetua recalls that after this sentencing, her brother said to her, Sister, you are now greatly honored. And the next day, while Perpetua was praying, she saw a golden ladder reaching up into the heights and up to heaven. And all along the sides of the ladder, there were swords and lances, dagger, hooks and daggers um, lining the ladder so that 
While climbing, if anyone looked anywhere but up to heaven while they climbed, they would be severely injured. And at the base of the ladder, there was a large dragon that was trying to scare all of those journeying, journeying up the ladder to look away from heaven. And so on this ladder, she first saw her instructor, Saturus, climbing the ladder. And when he reached the top, he called down, saying to Perpetua, Perpetua, I wait for you, but take care that the dragon does not bite you. And in response to this, Perpetua said, In the name of Jesus Christ, he will not hurt me. And when she said this, the dragon put his head down. And so Perpetua next climbed the ladder, and at the top she saw a beautiful garden stretching out over the land. And in the garden she saw a tall, tall man with white hair dressed like a shepherd, and he was milking sheep. And when the man saw her, he said, Thou art welcome, my child. And upon saying this, he gave her some curds from the milk. And so when Perpetua woke up from this vision, there was still a sweet taste in her mouth. And then at this point, she understood that she and the other Christians were going to have to suffer for their faith. In the meantime, Felicity was in torment because she was afraid she would not give birth before their scheduled date for execution. You see, it was against the law for pregnant women to be executed because to kill a child in the womb was shedding innocent and sacred blood. And Felicity did not want her companions to go on this journey, this martyrdom, without her. Um, but two days before the execution, she went into labor and gave birth to a healthy young girl who was adopted and raised by one of the Christian women in Carthage. The officers of the prison began to recognize the influence and strength of Perpetua and her fellow Christians. This did not stop their execution, but the warden of the prison later became a believer. On the day of the execution, the four Christians and their teacher, one of the Christians having not made it out of the prison, walked into the arena with joy and at peace. Recounts of this journey uh, later say that Perpetua walked with shining steps as the true wife of Christ. The men in the arena were attacked by bears, leopards, and wild boars. The women, on the other hand, were stripped of their clothing and had to face a rabid heifer. Perpetua and Felicity were thrown into the arena and attacked, but shortly after they were thrown into the arena, the crowd cried out that they had had enough. So the two women were removed from the arena and were clothed again. Shortly after, though, they were thrown back into the arena to face the gladiators. And Perpetua and Felicity stood side by side as they were slain by the sword in the arena in Carthage. These two martyrs are the patron saints of mothers and expectant mothers, and their feast day is celebrated on March 7th. So in the example that St. Perpetua and Felicity give us with their strong faith in the face of suffering and trial, let us pray for their intercession that we may look at the face of suffering and trial in this same resolve and strength. And so St. Perpetua and Felicity, pray for us. There's our answer to who are the Saints Perpetua and Felicity. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something you didn't already know about these two great martyrs. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button below. And comment below if you have any suggestions of Saints you'd like to see on future episodes or other topics you'd like to see on this channel. And as always, make sure to stay tuned for next week's episode of Who's That Saint? So we'll see you next time. God bless.